Hello, my name is John Newstead. I'm a soil scientist at Delta T Devices. And in this short video, I want to introduce to you the PR2 profile probe system. So this is a soil moisture system based on a probe that you insert into an access tube. This probe comes in two varieties, a short one, such as we've got here. Each double ring represents one capacitance soil moisture probe. The longer version has additional probes at 60 and 100 centimetres depth. And it also comes in two output varieties, an analog probe and a digital SDI-12 probe. So the real USP of this system is its portability. So you can use it with a handheld portable meter like this, the HH2 meter, which gives you that information at, on depth and the amount of water at each depth. And if you've put installed lots of access tubes around your field site or your crop um, or your catchment area. Um, you can get a lot of information on the depth and spatial distribution of that water. And you get lots of information very quickly using this type of system. Of course, you could also use this system attached to a data logger in a fixed location. So you're getting time series data. But the real USP is its portability. So you're getting robust, durable and accurate data and actually quite a lot of it if you install multiple access tubes. So now I'm going to install, uh, uh, show you how to install the access tubes, this item, um, and we're going to do that um, just over here. Okay, so here we are, we've selected our spot that we're going to do, um, install a, a profile probe, an access tube. Um, in your ore green kit, you'll have one of these. This is a stabilization plate. So all you need to do is just kit uh, clip these uh, cable ties, put the other arms on, and what you end up with when you put it in position is this star-shaped pattern on the ground. We just secure it to the ground, like so, so this is quite stable. Now what we're going to do is use the auger through this central hole, and we're going to first of all choose a collar to put into this hole. Now, this is the auger you're going to use to install the access tube to start with. This is often called a pilot auger or a gouge auger. It's sort of got a half moon shape to it. And what we're looking for is a collar that has very little movement. So you can see on here, quite a lot of movement. Oh, quite a lot of movement. A lot of movement. These are for different types of auger. So if you want to see or understand more about the different types of auger we can provide, please do look at the manuals. It's quite, um, it goes into some depth in the manuals, okay? You can get those for free online. And the white one here, as you can see, look, very little movement at all. So we're gonna use the white collar and put that in. Now, you may ask yourself, why are we using this stabilization plate anyway? The whole point of using this is to improve the quality of your data that you get. The whole point of using this is to reduce the effect of that wobble when you're augering. So when you're augering, you cannot help but actually move around slightly. And the effect of that is to produce a funnel-shaped hole. And all that means is that when the weather's wet, water will flow down that hole and will bias your soil moisture readings to a, a wetter figure than perhaps they should be. And similarly, when it's dry, you're going to get um, a much lower soil moisture reading than perhaps you should be. Okay, so you want to reduce the chances of a funnel shaped hole going. And also obviously this is going to help you produce a, um, a nice vertical hole. So when you say it's 10 or 20 centimetres depth, you know it is at 20 centimetres depth. So let's move on. Okay, so the next stage is actually to auger the hole. So we picked up our um, gouge auger again. We put it into our collar. There we go. And now we're going to start augering a hole. Now I have measured my access tube, my short access tube comes up to about here. So I need to auger a hole down to about this depth, okay? So this is going down quite nicely. And then we gently pull this out. Now, your kits will come of a, a red little trowel that you can just scoop this all out with. But I would suggest that perhaps um, you actually keep this to one side because this allows you to look at the soil 
profile as you go down. You might be able to tell a lot from this about how the, the soil is actually changing. Okay, so it's worth keeping this, just putting it to one side. You could also use that to sample from. Okay, so I think that's all good down deep enough. I measured the uh, uh, access tube earlier. So I know I've all got down to about here. The access tube comes to about here. So we should have plenty of depth there for the installation of the access tube. But first, it's just a, a little helpful hint. If you've got a clay soil and you try to force down an access tube, even though the hole we've organ is exactly the right size, it can be really quite a tight fit. And what you need is a nice snug fit. You don't want to compress the ground mass, the soil material around your hole, because that will alter the water content. You want it in its natural state, undisturbed. So particularly in a heavy clay soil, we use, or you can use, to help installation, this. It's a sort of a, a reaming auger. It's a, another auger with a very sharp um, blade on it. This one's quite old. It's quite, uh, it's perhaps not as sharp as it could be, but it should be good enough. So all we do, I've already checked, again, not much movement here. Using the right collar will keep me augering and installing my access tube in the centre of the hole. Okay, so we'll change the collar. We'll put this in and it just push it down gently in a heavy clay soil. It will just shave off a little bit more. So you can see not much has come off on that. Uh, but in a heavy clay, you might have just some fine shavings there. It just makes installation much better. Okay. Then we come to installing the actual access tube itself. To do that, firstly, you need an access tube. I'm reusing one, recycling one here, um, which I think is good practice if you can. You want to have an access tube that just about fits into the collar. So in this case, the yellow collar. So by using this, this access tube is going down the center of the hole I've augered. Okay, it's not going up an angle, it's not at the edges. In theory, it should sit nicely down the middle of that hole. Okay, not compressing one side rather than the other. So we change the collar again, put the access tube in. Um, and we have this insertion rod, which works from the inside. Okay, it's pushing at the bottom. If you were to hammer at the top of this um, uh, access tube, these are sort of precision milled fiberglass, you'll just smash and break all the top here. Okay, you want to avoid that at all costs. So we put this in <coughs> and we simply just tap it gently. This one's going in quite nicely. Now every few hits, it's advisable just to pull it out. Sometimes you might find a vacuum forming at the bottom so it just releases that vacuum. Okay, that's just a little tip. So just keep tapping away. This one's going in particularly nicely. They don't always do this, which is why it's important to try and make that hole the best you can. If you need to use a reaming auger, use one. Okay. So I'm trying to push this in so that, let me take this off. There was a line on that access tube. It's just at the soil surface. So I think that's there now. We can take all this out. Take these probes off. So that you can see what we've been doing. So here you can see, get some glass out of the way. Here's the access tube. It needs to go in a little bit more. So we'll just tap it down a little bit more. I want that black line at the surface. Now, when I insert the profile probe into here, I know that first sensor is going to be at 10 centimetres depth. Okay, if I were to lawn mow this, no problem with that, but I can push this right to the surface so that you can then cut over the top of this without any problems. Obviously then you're adding about five centimetres extra to the depth that you're measuring. So just make sure you're aware of what depth your soil sensors are actually going to be at. To stop 
Any further bypass flow, we do provide these rings. You don't have to use those, but they're just further good practice. And then you have a choice of bung. So if you were to push this to the soil surface, you might want to use this red one, okay, which can be flat to the surface. You need a pair of little tongs just to pull that out. Just use the, the tongue in the middle there to grab hold of it. Or you have the little black at the top. Okay, and that's essentially your access tube installation. Now we need to go and uh, take some readings with our probe. Okay, so we've come to this access tube, let's say, it's got its bung on, we want to take some readings. I might have half a dozen other sensors I want to go and visit. You take the bung off, take the access tube off, your cover, insert your probe. Now when it just sits on top of the, of, of the access tube, you need to just push it and twist it. That little twist is quite important. You may have seen it drop down a little bit more. Okay, that's to make sure there's a good seal there. Okay, so once you've got your good seal, you then just switch on your probe, press read, it takes about a second per sensor, and then they'll come up on the screen. So obviously before you came out, you would have consulted your manual. It's very easy how to program this, doesn't take more than a few seconds really to do. Um, and the arrows here allow you to scroll up and down through the different sensors, okay? So very simple to use. Then you simply pull your tube probe out, put the cover back on, put the bung back on, and then you're ready to go off to your next tube. So it's very, very quick. Now, one thing that, um, another sort of good USP that people don't often use about the Profile Probe um, is that you can actually use this to check the quality of your installation. You may notice when you look at this that the sensor doesn't go all the way around. So in actual fact, when we insert our probe, there we go, I can line up one of the screws with a mark on the access tube and I can take three readings. So I take one reading, turn it 120 degrees, take another, turn it 120 degrees, take another. Now, in theory, all three of those readings should be roughly the same. Let's say 20%, 21%, 20%, roughly the same. But if you're next to a void, if one of your sensors is next to a void or a big stone, those are going to have the same effect as a funnel shape would when you're installing the access tube. So a stone or a void has very low permittivity, that's going to result in very low water content reading. Okay, you want to be reading what's in the ground mass, not what the stone's telling you. So of those three readings, if you had 20%, 21% and 8%, that tells you one of those readings, let's say this third reading, that sensor at that depth is probably next to a stone or a void. And that gives you a management choice. You either install this probe in this location with the probe lined up in a certain direction. So when you press read, you're happy with those readings, you know you're reading into the ground mass. Or you can actually take this tube out and reinstall it somewhere else. So again, it's, it's giving you information to make a management decisions to improve the quality of your data set. Um, and I think it's quite a good little tool. So we then take this out again, we put the access tube back on, put the cover back on, and then we can go off to our next site. Okay, so in summary, the Delta T PR2 profile probe system, um, it's very flexible, very easy to use, very easy to train people to use. It can be attached to a data logger for in situ time series measurements, so long term in situ measurements. But its real USP comes in its portability. So if you've installed lots of access tubes around your field site, your research site, um, your catchment, your crop area, whatever your area of interest is, you simply go round the, each tube, one after the other, insert the probe, you press read, you get lots of information on the depth, the volumetric moisture content at those depths, and importantly, you get an idea of the spatial distribution of that water at depth. So it's very versatile, very easy to use, um, comes in a variety of formats, so this one here I've just shown you has four sensors, 
10, 20, 30, 40. We have another variety, another sensor, another probe, sorry, that has additional sensors at 60 and 100 centimeters. It has two output formats, analog or SDI 12. Um, if you want to know more about it, please do refer to our website. Please do look up the manuals. They're free to download. Lots of really useful information there about the system I've just shown, plus our additional augers um, and how to use them. And obviously, please do refer to our YouTube channel. Thank you very much and I hope to see you again soon.